Hi, this is Shadi and today I'm gonna talk about one of Judo's modern legend and that is Isao Okano. If you remember from my George Medi video, Isao Okano spoke highly of George saying that if you combine all the knowledge of the Judokas and the Kodokan with us, they would not equate to George's Judo knowledge. So someone as accomplished as Isao saying this is very respectable and admirable and he himself is very uh, legendary today i'm gonna discuss and talk a little bit about him he is very accomplished in terms of competition uh, teaching literature uh, contribution to judo and also bjj contribution believe it or not so he was born on january 20th 1944 he is still alive today at the age of 75 he was born in Ryugasaki, Japan. He was 5 foot 7 feet tall or 170 centimeters tall, weighing at 80 kilograms. So that's pretty dense and strong for someone his height. Uh, he fought in the middleweight. Uh, back then there was lightweight, middleweight and heavyweight and there was the open weight. So he fought in the first Olympic Games in Tokyo 1964. I made a video about this. Um, he was still going to Chuyo University and studying law back when he was preparing and competing in the Olympics. Uh, he won the gold medal in the middleweight. So he is one of the first Olympians to win gold uh, in Tokyo. Uh, he also won the world championship the following year in 1965 and back when he won and became Olympic and world champion, he was only 21 years old. Now, you can say that, you know, Daria Bilodid is 19 years old, two times world champion, uh, or Uta Abe is also 19 or 20. She is also two times world champion, so it's not very impressive. However, keep in mind, this was almost 60 years ago. So the records back then are surely not like today. Uh, in fact, People like Okano paved the way for people like Bilodid, Abe, uh, Mariama, etc. So if you compare a 60s muscle car uh, to today's muscle cars, it's ludicrous and absurd. So for him back at that time, that was still very impressive. Even by today's standards, if you're 21 Olympic and world champion, that's very impressive. So... He was 21 years of age, already world and Olympic champion. He would go on and compete in the All uh, Japan. In 67 and 69, he would place first. And in 68, he placed second. So in three consecutive years, he was on the podium, either first or second. So he was very highly uh, accomplished. And he quit competitive judo or retired from competitive judo uh, at only 25 years uh, of age, which is very young. He could have accomplished far more. Um, he was a master in the three techniques, Seyonage, you see here in front of you, the Kochigari and the Osotogari. And also he was a master in Neiwaza following his throwing technique with very good uh, control on the ground. Uh, so after he retired from competitive uh, judo, he went on and founded the Sekijuku uh, judo team or judo school, which is now known as Ryutsu Keize University, his judo team. And he founded it in 1970, so just one year after he finished the All Japan placing first. So he would go on and train a future Olympic medalists like Kazuhiro uh, Nimo, Nimo Miya and also served as Japanese coach for future uh, Olympics uh, for Japanese team in 1976 in particular and he also later on became instructor in many universities like Tokyo and Keio University in the late 80s until the late 90s and he retired from teaching in 2000 so he was a very accomplished uh, judoka competitively and also as a teacher uh, bringing home 
uh, gold medals as a teacher and as a competitor himself. Uh, like I've mentioned, he also uh, greatly uh, contributed to Judo's uh, literary works. He published in 1976 the book Vital Judo and he is very uh, known for his contribution to BJJ as well um, because he taught the Brazilian uh, Jiu-Jitsu black belt Joe Moreira and Fredson but ciao, uh, excuse me if I butcher the name, and many others like Edson Carvalho and Oswaldo Alves. So he was very uh, influential in BJJ in specifically sweeps. Uh, so for example, uh, from the guard, so he was very good on his back as well, not just top position like in judo competitions, side control and the guard. So he was very accomplished in almost every area as a judoka he influenced the brazilians he uh, won gold medal as an olympian the first olympic gold medal in 1964 and also world champion and the national japanese champion um, so for those of you who are you know talking about how it evolved past the Japanese after they took the basics, etc. Even till the 1960s and the 70s and the 80s, the Japanese were still influencing uh, BJJ. So this brings me back to my older point, and that is it's all Japanese in the end. And maybe there are some that came very recently in the last 20 years, contributed to guards, uh, etc. like Keenan, Eddie Bravo, but the basics and the contributors are all Japanese um, from Maeda up until the late 20th century here with Isao Okano so men like that are very uh, it's very important to study them because like I said it paints a very big picture um, to understand where everything came from and also how all these characters interacted for example George Medi who was born in France and went to Brazil and competed there, had beef with the Gracies. He also met Isao Okano, an Olympian, who also benefited Brazil in Judo and Neiwaza. So it's very nice to be cultured and also uh, educated on these subjects. Uh, like all my history videos, all these characters interact and it's very nice to create a clear picture. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.